Chuck D said it better than I could say it. Every brother ain't a brother. But it goes deeper than that. We have a lot of black people who have no interest in securing justice for our people, who have no empathy for the plight of our people, and who will give their lives, their talent, all of their resources to sustain the status quo. We have some enemies within our ranks. And I don't mean enemy in terms of difference of opinion. Enemies in terms of different beliefs. I mean enemies in terms of taking direct, deliberate, physical actions against the well-being and health and interests of black people. And we, as a community, do little to nothing to address this. Yes, we like to watch the Coon Train videos. And black Twitter is on point with its hashtags and mockery of, of Coon. But there's no, still no protocol in the black community for treason. And we have been, you cannot list a movement. You cannot list a movement. I don't care if it's a, 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 a field slave rebellion. Marcus Garvey uprising or Michael uh, or, or, or Malcolm X's all, uh, organization of African unity. You cannot find one instance where black people have mobilized for freedom, liberation, resources or basic human dignity where there has not been a black person who was a willing agent of our enemies and oppressor. Now, that's not unique to us. Every Community, every race, every nation produces traitors. That's not unique. I'm not saying there's something special or particularly wrong with black people in this context. The United States has a traitor in the White House. White people went and elected a traitor. Trump is a traitor. Why is he a traitor? Because Trump deliberately and blatantly puts the interest of other himself and other nations over his own nation. Trump is willing to negotiate with hostile foreign powers, not for the interest of the nation, but for his own pocket. That makes him a traitor. Not that I'm mad at him for it. Not that I'm mad at him for it. I just never thought I'd see a white man elected president that was less loyal to the government than I am. We could all take lessons from Trump. I wish every black person had his level of patriotism. Get out of this system what you can and dump it. <laughs> I wish African revolution, I wish my community had that Trump quality of, 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 of approach to the United States. United States. That's how he says it. God bless the United States. But every nation produces traitors. Benedict Arnold's. Every movement, every white movement, whether it's a right wing fascist, there were Klansmen, there were Ku Klux Klansmen who were on the FBI payroll, feeding information and snitching on other Klansmen. Skinhead movements, they are always turning over on each other. They all smoke a little meth and get out and do a mosh pit and then plan some great white uh, action, some great terrorist acts. And as soon as, uh, and, and how many times have they been thwarted because one of the skinheads goes and snitch and goes into witness protection, covers up his swastika tattoos, and he's in the hood, gentrifying the hood, looking like a hipster, grows a beard, and is watering a lawn in the hood, and black folks think we got a new friend. So I'm not saying that. We're not unique in that. Edward Snowden is sitting in Russia right now. I don't think he was a traitor. I think he's, I have a lot of disagreements with Edward Snowden, but I have to admit, I respect what he did. To an extent, I, I might have to, because that's the thing with his libertarian ideology. Actually, he gave, he did a good thing, but he made the situation worse in many ways as well. But that's a whole nother discussion. If y'all want to talk about Snowden, we could talk about it. But, Every group produces traitors. That's my point. Every group. Black people don't have to be ashamed that we got Uncle Tom boot licking, uh, 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 Uncle Tom boot licking, handkerchief head, coon ass, buckwheat sellouts. We don't have to be ashamed. New Negroes, we, that's nothing for us to hold our heads in shame about. In fact, if you ain't in that category, 
you should hold your head up because everyone produces traitors. But here's where we diverge from many other groups of people. This is where we diverge. Is that we have not after centuries since the day we got here being plagued by Uncle Tom's sellouts, boot licking, handkerchief, head coons. Since the day we touched down, since Plymouth Rock fell on us. We have not sat down and said, okay, we got we have traders, we gonna have traders. Right now, there's a black woman walking around with a trader in her womb, and she's gonna birth that black child, suckle that black child, or get him formula, raise him up, send him to the best school she can afford, give him the best life he can afford, and the black community is gonna nurture him, and from his black community and from his black culture, he's gonna develop certain talents, certain survival techniques, and we're gonna give him, we ain't got much, but we're gonna give this black child what we do have to offer this black child. And that black child's gonna go off and reach the heights of heights right now. In a woman's womb. And as soon as he gets up there, he's going to have utter contempt and hatred for black women. He's going to have utter contempt of hatred for the black community and black culture. And he's going to sell his services to the enemies of our people. At a bargain basement clearance rack rate. Right now. Like Clarence Thomas. Colin Powell. Condolingus Rice. Omarosa Morgan Hall. Whatever. And you, we just, and, and we know this, we know this, and we have not sat down, not the Nation of Islam, not the, uh, not the UNIA, Universal Negro, not Garvey, not the Black Panthers didn't even have the far side, the Black Liberation Army. I don't know of any organization that has sat down. Now, there are black organizations that have sat down and said, this is what we need to do for economics. This is what we need to do for culture. This is what we need to do. Women's groups, black women's organizations, 100 black women. All these black women's organizations have sat down and said, this is what we need to do for black women. These are the particular interests of black women. These are the certain uh, compounding uh, issues that we have that go beyond race but also incorporate our gender and this patriarch. Black women sat down, mapped it out. Youth organizations have sat down. Uh, SNCC. Student organizations and student unions. Black secular organization, black religious organizations. Black integrationist organizations, black separatist organizations. All these different black formations have all sat down to identify and address problems. And not one of them that I know of has says, listen, if we're trying to do something in the interest of positive for black people, we're going to have traitors. We're going to have sellouts. We're going to have informants. And this is the policy for dealing with them. This is how we go about exposing them. This is how we go about sanctioning them. This is how we go about preventing them from having access. Right now. Al Sharpton is a for, an informant. He snitched on Asada Shakur and anybody else. Al Sharpton is an informant. Minister Louis Farrakhan was an agent of COINTELPRO because COINTELPRO said, we want to target Malcolm X for neutralization. I'm not a killer, but neither are you. But if somebody attack what you love, each one of you in here would become a killer instantaneously. Am I lying? Mother, let somebody look like they're attacking your child. Here's a woman who fought a bear because the bear snatched her baby. And she ran the bear down screaming until the bear dropped her baby. Love casts out fear. We don't give a damn about no white man law when you attack what we love. And frankly, it ain't none of your business. What have you got to say about it? Did you teach Malcolm? Did you make Malcolm? Did you clean up Malcolm? 
Did you put Malcolm out before the world? Was Malcolm your traitor or was he ours? And if we dealt with him like a nation deals with a traitor, what the hell business is it of yours? You just shut your mouth and stay out of it. Because in the future, we're going to become a nation. And the nation got to be able to deal with traitors and cutthroats and turncoats. The white man does deals with his. The Jews deal with theirs. Salman Rushdie wrote a nasty thing about the prophet and Imam Khomeini put out a death thing on him and it stands today. So whether he was a duped puppet or a willing asset, that remains to be seen. But we know he was a... But I'm getting a little ahead of myself. We haven't sat down. Not only have we not sat down and come up, we're the only group of people I know that let known exposed traitors rise to levels of leadership. And I think that's where... You want something to hold your head down about? You want something to be ashamed about? And I'm not one of them people like, black people, we the only people. I'm not, I'm not one to do that. I hate people that talk like that. But in this arena, and this is criticism with affection because I love my people and I want us to correct this. We have no policy for dealing with traitors. We're even reluctant to call a traitor a traitor. And we're so quick to forgive traitors. All of y'all, Kanye says slavery was a choice. Oh, we hooped and hollered. As soon as he dropped a new video, click, 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 click. As soon as he spit out and poop out some more of those orthopedic Yeezy shoes, they fly off the shelves. And every artist know, Lil Pump, or what's that dude, Pusha T, Jay-Z, he said him and Jay-Z, and the artist Every artist works with him like I can work with. It don't matter. He just did. Now, if Kanye said the Holocaust was a choice. If Kanye said the Holocaust was a choice. Six million people dead. That sounds like a choice. And Kanye could have probably said, look, there's this book called Hitler's Jewish Soldiers. There's documented history of honorary Aryans. And uh, we can look from the historical record that the integrated Jews in Germany were some of the most secular and Germanistic Jews. They, they were fully integrated and embraced the Nazi system. He, they, he could have come with facts and evidence and Holocaust denial, all that mess. But if he had said that, would Jay-Z do a record with him? Would Little Pump have done a record with them? Would little, would, 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 wouldn't getting out our dreams good music? Wouldn't Common and all other affiliates and associates with getting out our dreams jump off that label like rats from a sinking ship? Wouldn't Kim Kardashian be filing divorce papers? Wouldn't Kanye be giving apologies and be check himself into rehab? It would be a totally different set of consequences. Totally different. And they know it. Dr. Bobby E. Wright, and you got to get this quote in your head and think about it every day. Dr. Bobby E. Wright said, black people are the freest people in America in one respect. Black people are the freest people in America in one respect. And that is, you can do anything you want or say anything you want or act in any way you want against black people's interest. And the community will not sanction you. And that's a freedom other people don't know. That's a freedom a Jew, an Italian, or whatever flavor of white folks you want to deal with, Native American, Asian people, that's a freedom they do not know. You don't believe me? Look at some of the greatest Jewish scholars and intellects in the world today. Noam Chomsky, Norman Finkelstein. They are two of the, the, the most celebrated scholars all over the world. They lecture. 
They if they, if they they write a book in their sleep and it's on the New York Times bestseller list. They've never set foot in Israel. Now, if we had a black person who spoke against our interest, but yet they were still making money, they were still prominent all over the white media, we would love them as much as the white folks do. He's on TV. He must be on something. He must be doing something right. He got money. Who are you to criticize him? And I'm telling you, not only will we not proceed down the road to the promised land to freedom, we will continue to regress and go the wrong direction until we come up with set protocols. I developed a new Negro self-exposure protocol. Because when we do it, dealing with self-exposure, that's the lowest level. You wait for people to expose themselves. You don't have to investigate to expose them. And then there you expose, isolate, and expel. We got short memories. And we love a good redemption story. Slavery is a choice. Oh, I'm sorry. Ah, oh, they mixed up my prescription. I didn't know what I was talking about. Here, niggas, buy my record and keep me paid. So I can take this money back to my white folks. We better sit down with our scholars, with our security experts, with our revolutionaries, and say, how do we deal and address this scourge of treason within our community? And you got different levels of treason. You have high treason, people who are in government, people who are in institutions of power, multinational corporations. Then you just got round the way children, the thugs, the criminals, the pimps, the players, the hustlers. The, the, the predatory people in our communities. And yes, they are traitors too. I know y'all like to glamorize these gangsters and pimps and ballers. But they're traitors too. We need a standard. We need a protocol. We need a civil way of dealing with them. And we might have to elevate beyond civil matters and cultural protections to arm protection. But if it goes that way, throw down the tomahawk. We won't get that way. And everybody else does it. And what we're doing it backwards. We got people fighting for us identified as traitors. When, when Farrakhan said that Malcolm X was traitors and we dealt with them the way that a nation is supposed to deal with a traitor. So Malcolm, so Farrakhan understands the concept, even though he does it in reverse. He protects traitors and attacks loyalists, but at least he understands the concept. He just don't apply it the right way. We need a protocol. 